Hey, how's it going guys? In this PyQt5 tutorial video, we're going to build a customized pane that is data frame editor to update a data frame data set. All right, so here's the application we'll be building. It's a very simple application. On the top, we have a queue table widget and below that we have two buttons. One button to print the data set, the other button is to export the data frame data set to a CSV file. And before we dive into the tutorial, I just want to talk about why uh, building your own data frame editor is useful. The first reason is we can implement any type of validation we want. So for example, if an entry requires entering uh, digits such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then you can implement your own data validation rule to only allowing users to enter numbers only. And the second reason is it's easier to view the data. We can make the fonts bigger and we can uh, highlight the background color, the font color, and so on. As well as we can make the data entry test much easier. And the drawbacks are you will need to know a little bit about PyQt5. And it also takes time to build the application. And in case if we need to add uh, additional functionalities or features, then we'll need to modify the code. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Right, so let's dive into the tutorial. And I'll put this on the left so I can reference the, uh, the interface. Here I'm going to insert my code template. For this application, I'm going to import the system module. From the Qt widgets module, I'm going to import Q application Q widget, Q table widget, Q table widget item. Q header view, Q line edit, and a push button. And to implement my own data validation rule, I'm going to use the Q item delegate class and Q V box layout class to organize my widgets. From the Qt core module, I'm going to import a Qt class. And from the Qt GUI module, I'll import a Q double validator class. And this one more library we need. Uh, we need the pandas library. All right, so that's everything we need to import. Here I'm going to rename the app demo class as uh, editor. Let's do, let's name this to df editor. And I'll copy the class name to app the, to replace this app demo uh, class name. And I'll name my df editor instance as demo. All right, so here we need some dummy data. So here let me create my data dictionary. And we're going to have two columns, column X and column Y. For this data set, we're going to have four rows of uh, records. And for column Y, I'm going to insert a list from 10, 20, 30, and 40. And here I'll create my data frame object. Now let's go into our constructor. Let's so make the fonts a little bit bigger. All right. Here I'll create my QV box layout object. And I'll name the object main layout. And I'll set the layout with the main layout object. Next, I'm going to create my widgets. My first widget is going to be a table. And I don't have a table yet. Here, let me create a class. I'm going to name this class as table widget. And this is going to be our uh, Q table widget template. Inside the table widget class, we're going to pre-configure some of the settings. And we're going to have a parameter to take the data from the object. Here I'm going to create my uh, data frame object attribute. So I'll name the attribute as self.df. It's equals to df. Next, I'm going to increase my font size using the set style sheets method. 
and I'll set the font size to 35 pixel. Next, I'm going to insert the self.df attribute that shape, and it's going to return the DFN dimension. And I'll pass the dimension to two variables. One variable to store the row count, the other variable is to store the column count. So I'll name these two variables unrows and uncolumns. And here we can set the table widget uh, dimension. Here I'll insert the self.set column count. And I'll insert the uncolumns variable. And I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to rename column to row. And here I'll replace that with unrows variable. Next, I need to set the horizontal header labels. So it's the set horizontal header label method. And I'll provide the label names, so column X and column Y. And here I can insert the data, so data insertion. And this one's going to be set table dimension. So here I'm going to insert a nest loop. So I'm going to say that for i in range, and I'll insert the row count. And for j in range, here I'll insert the column count. And I'll use the set item method to display the text. So we need to provide the row index and the column index, followed by the item we want to display. And here we need to convert the value to string, otherwise uh, the text won't get displayed. So here we need to uh, specify the location with the i value and the j value. Now let's go back to the df editor class real quick. And here I'll create my table. This goes to table widget. And I need to pass the df object, so df editor dot df, and we'll add the table widget to the main layer object. Now let me launch the window to see what we have so far. And we have a typo. Oh, and this should be Perl. And this should be column count, actually column count. All right, so this is what we have so far. And as you can see that the text is a little bit cramped. And to fix that, we can go back to the table widget class. And here I can set the uh, session size. So we need to do that for both vertical header and horizontal header. that set session resize mode and we'll insert the Q header view class and we'll insert the stretch value. Now if I launch the application again, in this time the rows and the columns are expand. Let me pull out the final application. So in column X we'll have strings, in column Y we'll have integers. I want to insert a validation rule that to only allowing uh, in column Y, I don't want user to enter any string text. So if I try to type ABC, and the cell won't allow me to enter any, uh, any text in column Y. But in column X, I don't want to uh, implement any validation. So that means I can freely type anything I want. So one, two, three, question mark. And let me see if I can enter a uh, question mark in column Y. And I can't. All right, so just integers. Actually, let's do uh, doubles so we can enter uh, decimal points. All right. To implement a data validation feature, I'm going to create a QIdenDelegate class. 
And I'll name this class float delegate. I'm going to pass Q item delegate class as the parent class. I'm going to insert parent object as the parameter. I'm going to modify the create editor signal. And the signal takes three parameters, parent, option, and index. And inside the create editor method, inside the create editor method, I'm going to create a QLine edit object. And the QLine edit object is going to uh, replace the cell. Essentially, we're actually typing on a uh, QLine edit widget, not a cell. And on the editor object, I want to implement my uh, validation rule. So I'll use the set validator method. And I'll pass the Q double validator class to only allow an integer or decimal uh, values to be entered. And I want to return the editor object. Now let's go back. Within the table widget, now we can uh, use the set item delegate, actually delegate for column. So this is the method name, and this should be capital I. I want to implement the validation to second column. So I'll insert the column index one. And I'll pass the flow delegate class. Let me try it. Oops, so here's a typo. And this should be delegate. All right, so if I type an integer in column X, one, two, three, one, two, three point one, and that's okay. In column Y, I'm going to enter, let's do 10.5, that's okay. If I try to enter ABC, so the validation feature is working. Now, I want to be able to update the, the data frame data set uh, every time when I make a change. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to create a method to make an update to the data frame object. And I'll name this method update df. I'm going to have two parameters. So row index and column index. And here I'm going to grab the text from the table item. So self dot item. And we'll pass the row index and the column index dot text. And once we have the text that we want to replace, we can reference the data from the object dot I look and we'll pass the row index and the column index is equals to text. All right, so that's everything to write for table widget class. Now let's go back to DF editor class. We have created the table widget. Now we just need to finish uh, creating the other two buttons. For the first button, I'm going to name this as button print. And it's going to print the current data frame data set values. And I'm going to display uh, display DF. And for the font size, I'm going to set the font size to 30 pixel. And we'll add the button to my main layout object. For the other button, which is going to export the data frame data set to a CSV file, and I'll name the button uh, button export. It equals to Q push button. I'm going to display the text export to CSV file. I'm going to just copy these two lines and paste. Now we place the button reference. Let me take a look. All right, so this is what I have so far. Now we just need to uh, 
create the methods to link to both buttons. So the first method is going to uh, print the data frame data set values. And I'll name the method print df values. And the statement is print self.table.df. So basically was just printing the data frame object from the table widget. And to export the, oops, let me create the method first. So export to CSV. And to export the data frame object to a CSV file, it's pretty easy. From the data frame object, we can use the to CSV method and we'll just give a, a simple file name. So data export dot CSV. And I'm going to set the index to false. And I'll print a message, CSV file, exporter. And I just need to connect both methods to my buttons. So this one is going to be uh, connect, click, that connects. And I'm going to assign print the values method to this button. And for the export button, I will assign export self the export to CSV method. And that's it. Right now let's test it. So if I launch the application and if I print if I click on display DF button and there's no reference table. Let me take a look. Oh, okay, so this should be self. So then so I need to replace these two with self.table. Let me try again. Okay, so if I display the button, that's going to print the current data frame data set. Let's say I want to change the value from A to Apple. And I'll replace this with cats. And for the numbers, I'm going to enter 100. Let's do 300.5. Oops. 200.5. If I click on display DF button, and I see the value is not updated. Let me take a look. Oh, okay. So I forgot to uh, connect this update DF method to my on sale change signal. So let me do that right now. So here I'm going to insert the self change signal. And we're going to pass the uh, row position and the column position that connect. And we'll pass the update DF method. All right, let me try again. So if I click on display DF, and that's going to print the current DF and DF set based on this, uh, based on this output right here. And if I change uh, this to apple and c to cats and i'll change this to 100 and i'll place 30 to 300.5 if i click on display df and this time the values are updated now if i click on export to csv file and here i get a message csv file exported and if I open the CSV file, and here's our current data frame data set value. All right, so this is someone to share in this video, and hopefully you guys found the video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.